Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Wade Patterson. I'm passionate about impactful communication and making people better communicators. And if this is the first time you've landed on this channel and specifically if you came here because you're about to MC a wedding and you're wanting to know how to do that process, I want you to actually go away from this video and visit the video that's going to pop up up at the top as well. It'll be linked below because that first video I did on how to MC a wedding gets into the nuts and bolts. It goes through the process from start to finish and that is the resource you're going to want to check out. Now, if you've already seen that first video and you're looking for a bit more depth, then this is the video for you because I received a couple questions in the comment section regarding people who are in tricky situations that maybe I didn't address in that first video. The purpose of this video is to help out those individuals as well as anyone else who is in the same shoes as those people. So the first question I received came from Tiz and Tiz said, first of all, thank you for these tips. Now getting to my question, I've been asked to MC a wedding reception coming up on Monday, which is four days from now. Not a lot of time to prepare for MCing a wedding. The thing is, I don't know the bride or groom personally. The bride's father is friends with my father and hence asked me to do it. So I have absolutely no information regarding the bride and the groom and it's a wedding that the parents are in charge of more than the couple themselves. I don't know anybody there, I feel lost. Tis, thank you first off for watching my first video on how to MC a wedding and second for your question because it's a great question, it's a tricky situation but I do have some thoughts that can help you out. First off, it's important to remember that there are couples who don't always ask a friend or a family member to MC their wedding. They may hire it out. They may have a professional MC come in. And in those situations, the professional MC doesn't know the bride and the groom personally. However, I've been to weddings where despite the fact they don't know them, they do a fantastic job and everyone has an amazing time. Now I know these are professionals we're talking about, but I still believe you can have the same results. The first tip I have for Tiz is to reach out to the bride and groom personally. I know there's only four days before the wedding. The bride and groom are probably incredibly busy, but try to steal even 20 minutes or a half hour of their time because even though the parents are the ones who seem like they are organizing this event, it's still the bride and the groom's wedding and they may have certain expectations or certain wishes for their reception and you wanna make sure that you're doing whatever possible to help them have an amazing evening. In the first video, I suggest that you give the bride and the groom homework, things like writing up descriptions of each member of the wedding party and in Tiz's situation, it sounds like that may not be as feasible because they probably have a lot to worry about with four days until their wedding. Therefore, they may not have time for that sort of thing. The advice to Tiz is to go in prepared. The many brides and grooms, don't know what they want specifically from their wedding reception. They are looking actually to the MC to provide a lot of that information of how they should go through it. So it's always a great idea to have the approach of asking the bride and groom what they'd like to see and then if they ask you for your advice, be ready to come with some ideas or some suggestions of how the evening could work. Same goes for Tiz. If Tiz is able to meet with the bride and the groom, even for a short amount of time, see if they have any expectations and if they don't and if they look panicked, have some backup ideas to put their minds at ease and say, no worries, we're gonna get through this. Let's just answer a couple questions, go through some suggestions, tell me what you like, tell me what you don't, and we're gonna make sure you have an amazing wedding reception. In that meeting with the bride and the groom, it's a really good idea 
to attempt to get as much information as possible. Again, they may not have time to do the homework on bridal party descriptions, but you can take notes and you can ask them to read off all the names and maybe just give a couple quick thoughts, things that come to the top of their mind about those individuals. Write those notes so that when you, as the MC, are introducing the wedding party, you're not just saying a name, you actually have a little fun fact or information about each person. It's going to make the audience happy because everyone who's attending the wedding, they'll get to know a bit more about the bridal party, but it'll make the bridal party feel special as well, that they are not just having their name called, but a little bit of special information being shared with them for the whole group. Another thing Tiz or anyone in this situation is going to want to do is find out who the bride and the groom would like to see given a special reference or shout out. Oftentimes this includes family members, especially parents, grandparents, or other individuals who have traveled a far way to be there on the wedding day. These special mentions are important because after the wedding party has come in, kind of the grand entrance, they've each been introduced. Perhaps you've given some housekeeping and a bit of a format of how the night is going to go. This is an opportunity to give those special mentions, recognize for the entire room, those individuals who the bride and groom really want to get that special recognition and it's going to flow nicely into the evening. Other key essentials that Tiz is going to want to find out from the bride and the groom, and again, this is covered in more depth in my first video on how to MC a wedding, but in Tiz's unique situation where there's a short amount of time, I'm just sticking to the most important parts. Things like when the dinner is going to be and what the bride and groom's preference is. Typically, the head table, including the wedding party, will be the first table that goes to eat. If it's a buffet-style dinner, if it's plated, they will have their meal brought to them first. And then it's often the parents' table that goes. But you want to check with the bride and groom because they may have a particular order for a particular reason, and you want to make sure that whatever their wishes are, or what happens on their special night. It's also critical to know if there's going to be a DJ and a day of wedding planner. If there is a DJ, one of the best things you can do as an MC is introducing yourself to that individual and coordinating because sometimes there's a bit of overlap in the tasks that a, B, that a DJ will handle versus what you will handle as the MC. So if you can talk to that individual before and get on the same page, then it's going to be smooth from that side. And then when it comes to the day of wedding planner, that is a person who will also have expectations of how the day can go. So even on the wedding day itself, if that's the first time you talk to the day of planner, that's okay, but it's an opportunity for you as an MC to introduce yourself, chat about what you have in mind for the evening, make sure that aligns with the day of planner who has probably spent more time with the bride and the groom and that way again everyone is on the same page it's going to make things as seamless as possible other factors to consider who is giving speeches and what is the order of those speeches when you have that information during the day of the wedding you have an opportunity to introduce yourself to the different speakers and give them a heads up of the order that they will be speaking in. For people giving speeches, often that's a very nerve-wrenching thing to do, like that is something that is incredibly scary. And if you know the order that you're giving a speech in and you've met the MC and there's a little bit of communication, it takes a bit of pressure off of the individuals giving the speech, it helps them relax, which again, it just adds to the overall smoothness and how everything is perceived by those attending the wedding. Is the couple going to cut a cake? Is there going to be a first dance? If there's a DJ, at what point does your role transition and now the DJ is taking over things and you're sort of off the clock? These are the types of questions that Tiz should be asking the bride and the groom if Tiz is able to connect with those individuals beforehand. But let's say worst case scenario, Tiz is simply unable to connect with the bride and groom for whatever reason that's not possible. How on earth is this going to work? Well, as mentioned in the comment, it sounded like the parents are really the ones leading the charge in terms of organization of the wedding. And if that's the situation, since Tiz has a bit of an in with 
the father knowing the, the bride or the groom's father and there's some sort of connection there. The next suggestion would be really leaning into the bride or the groom's parents, talking to them, getting as much information as possible about the bride and the groom and the entire wedding party, setting expectations of what they believe the bride and the groom will want for the reception, how it's going to flow, getting that information from the parents if that's the only possibility left. But again, the better solution is to talk to the bride and the groom directly if it is possible. A final piece of advice for Tiz is to not get too stressed out. This is a difficult situation to be put in and you need to go into it flexibly. There are going to be things, and this is even if you're the most prepared MC in the world, there will be things that go sideways on the wedding day. That is the way it works. The food might be later than you expect, or maybe a parent whose turn it is to give a speech is not in the room when it's their turn and you have to adapt. That is something that is critical for any MC to be there to enjoy the evening. If you're not having fun, the attendees will be able to see that on your face and that's not going to make for a very good reception. You wanna be smiling, you wanna be enjoying yourself, laid back, casual, still organized, still having everything planned, but able to roll with the punches. That is the skill set that is probably the most important thing to have as an MC. Received another comment on that video, this time from an individual named Matt B. And Matt says, hey man, thanks for the advice. MCing this Saturday, so again, sort of like Tiz, only a few days of preparation. Any tips on some jokes and when to do them? This is such a great question Matt has asked because I truly believe humor is one of the most important ingredients of any speech or emceeing role. Anytime you're speaking in front of a group of people, the ability to use humor is what separates good speakers from great speakers. And here is why. As an audience or as attendees of a wedding, when an MC steps up to the microphone, everyone is probably wondering whether that person is going to be any good. Are they going to be enjoyable? Are they going to make the evening fun? There's going to be some judgment early on. The sooner you as an MC can help the audience laugh, it's going to relax them. It's going to put their mind at ease. Okay, this MC knows what he or she is doing. Tonight's gonna to be enjoyable. They've already got me laughing. It's 20 seconds in, something along those lines. It is powerful. Using humor is so powerful. But what's even more powerful than relaxing your audience is relaxing yourself. Because emceeing, speaking in front of people in any capacity is a scary thing to do. It is intimidating. It's one of the reasons it's people's greatest fear in the world. But the ability to use humor and inject it almost strategically, as soon as you hear the, the audience or the attendees laughing, it instantly allows you to relax, to settle into your groove because you know that already they're enjoying themselves. So the tip for Matt here is to try and inject that humor as early as possible. So when should Matt be try to inject that humor in order to get that laughter? Well, I have a few ideas around this, but typically an MC, when they first take the mic, it's often to introduce, it's the grand entrance, to reintroduce the wedding party as part of the reception. Again, every reception is going to be a little bit different, but this is the most common thing I have seen in the weddings that I've attended. Well, announcing those names and maybe having upbeat music is great to get the energy up. And then as the table sits down, what's a really great strategy is announcing and introducing each member of the wedding party and doing the homework beforehand, just like in Tiz's situation that I explained before, talking to the bride and the groom to get some information about each of those individuals. And you wanna balance it with humor and generally nice things about those people. The nice things are gonna make everyone, it's a wedding, everyone wants to feel the love and feel special, so probably if it's a best man talking about, if it's a brother or a best friend, how much that person has meant to the groom over the years. Again, use the groom's words, not your own. 
but then get the groom to give you a funny story or something that's a little bit beyond an inside joke so that everyone can participate in the humor of it, but something funny about that individual, a fun fact, maybe something that is odd that they do, who knows, something that's gonna poke a little bit of fun but not make them feel upset or uncomfortable. And those are the things that are gonna get the audience laughing really early and it's the perfect timing because again, it's gonna give you the confidence and it's gonna allow them to relax as well. After the introductions of the wedding party and the housekeeping items, this is often an opportunity for a short story, personal story perhaps, about how you know the bride and the groom or something about the circumstance of the wedding and what I have found over time, the speakers who are funniest use personal stories. Canned jokes, they can work, it's possible, but it really relies a lot on comedic timing and how funny you are as a person and your ability to deliver these jokes. And it's a lot riskier, it's a lot riskier. Often our own stories that we've told to many different people before and we've almost social proof them, we've seen that they derive laughter from other individuals. Those are tested stories that we know with more confidence we can tell in front of a bigger group and they're probably going to get laughter as well. So if you have a great story about the bride and the groom and your relationship and how they asked you to be MC or something along those lines, that may be a great opportunity to tell a personal story, get the audience laughing. Another suggestion on this point is to not make that too long. You don't want this to turn into the you show, you as the MC. It's about the bride and the groom, but you can inject yourself, some personal stories, some personal humor, and that is another way to get the crowd laughing. A final thought when it comes to humor is to know the sweet spot of Maybe getting close to that edge, being a little bit edgy, but definitely not crossing the line. I have unfortunately attended weddings where MCs have gotten almost mean, it's turned into a roast instead of a toast, and usually that doesn't go over well. Some people might find it hilarious, but the majority of those in attendance often don't love it when it almost turns into mean-spirited humor. And that is something you want to be aware of. Things that even maybe you think aren't offensive at all, you don't know all the individuals in the wedding and that is something to talk to the bride and groom about in advance. Get their finger on the pulse of what is acceptable. Some brides and grooms want you to go as far as you can and be really edgy and funny. Maybe that's why they picked you as an MC because you are the, the comedian in the group and they want you to be your authentic self and that is awesome. But make sure that the bride and groom is on board. Sometimes they have family members who get offended really easily. Really important to navigate that situation so that you come prepared to make people laugh but not do so at the expense of others being very upset. Again, I hope these additional tips on how to MC a wedding were helpful. I really encourage you, if you have not watched that first video I've referenced a couple times throughout this video, it is linked below. Please, please, please go watch that because that is a deep dive on all things MCing a wedding. Some of the things I covered in this video, I cover in that one as well, but much more depth in that other video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do that. It's my full intention to create a lot of video content on how to make you a better and more impactful communicator. If that is something you're interested in, this is a great spot to get that content. So please subscribe, like this video, comment below if it was any help to you, and I'll catch you on the next one.